So yesterday on August 25th, NIST uploaded this announcement here where they announced some uh, expert team to investigate the Champlain Towers collapse. But what's really of interest here to us is what's at the bottom here. They've got this video. Okay, so here we've got a drone flyby here along the beach, and you can tell I'm going to stop this. So I'm going to stop this right here, and you can see pretty much when this was taken. This is the part of the building that they collapsed with the controlled demolition on July 4th. And then the rest of the collapse was right here, and the pool deck was over here that collapsed, and here's the pool. This is the hotel next door. There's the pool where the tourist shot that now famous video looking straight down the the garage ramp. This is what's left of that ramp. Now I want to take a look at something here because this gives me a little bit of concern right here and what might be what we call overcrowding of the the beams. I don't know if yeah this is probably a beam but as you can see these don't look like these are overlap rods. It's hard to tell if these are rebars are overlaps or not. But what I am worried about is when I see them this close together because they are not supposed to be this close together like you see these here. Because when you pour concrete, it needs to have a certain amount of space around it to avoid the voids and everything to make it, to make it flow into place a lot better and to obtain the strength that it needs. So when you have rebar rods that are this close together like this, this is a bad thing and it's and this is actually forbidden by code but what i don't know is if these are just overlaps for a joint or not i'm also concerned about like how unbelievably clean and easily the concrete came off of these textured rebar rods here as though it's like eating fish and you're just left with the bones you know, and I don't know if any of this corrosion was pre-existing if it was already inside the concrete or if it's from afterwards but remember, they're taking these photos on the site. So it's only been sitting there maybe a few weeks. I don't know if that's enough to make it corrode to this point or not. Yeah. So looking at this picture, we don't know if these are too close together. I'm assuming they are. I mean, look at this. You really want to have one inch in between these rebars in order for the concrete to flow properly. Okay, now here's an, uh, another twist in this there. And again, as we look at these here, I'm seeing these down here look like they're pretty close. These here are pretty close. But look at these. There's, f I believe there's one, two, three, four of them right here. These are almost touching. And that's a no-no. I don't understand how they could have gotten away with that unless somehow they got squeezed together after the fact. But this looks to me like it was formed this way. And if you put these four rebar together like this, getting the concrete to flow in between them, and same with these two here, that you're you're asking a lot. This is not going to make a, a very good, healthy concrete pour. Okay, so they're basically kind of showing us the same scene over and over again from different angles. So they're not really giving us a whole lot, but I'm going to show you something pretty powerful coming up. Now this one here, I'm looking here. This is quite a bit of rusty rebar. And I don't know if this happened because of the rains from the last couple of weeks. Because <coughs> remember, this is a, going on about three weeks now that this has all been sitting out here. But the other thing that I pointed out, even from day one, guys, is look how chalky the concrete is here. And the other thing I pointed out from the very first photographs I saw of the rubble pile the day after the collapse was that why does it look like it's been picked clean? Like when you eat fish off the bones and you just leave the bones. Look, it's like there's zero concrete on there. You would think the concrete would have like stuck, you know, a few clumps here, a little clump here, and a little clump here. But ever since my first day of commenting, I've been pointing this out as to why is all of this rebar just picked totally clean? So right here, they're giving us a little bit of a first glance of the garage floor. So the whole place basically looks like a hockey rink now. And when you look here, you can see the floor is pretty much intact. So if anybody had any thoughts about theories of maybe a sinkhole, you could put that to rest. There's no 
I don't see any big gashes in the floor, no giant cracks, no sinkholes, no nothing. And in fact, all of the columns, as you can see, pretty much stood their ground. They didn't get like totally ripped off the floor or anything. Okay, now this right here, uh, the pool is just to the left of this gentleman here. And so what we're looking at is towards the south. So this is, like I said, it looks like a giant hockey rink now. You're standing on the garage floor looking to the south. This is that 87 Park condo that's right next door. So the pool wall used to stand right here. And this on the other side of the cones is that public walkway that goes to the beach between the two condos. I'd kill to be the company that's renting all of these cones to them. Look at this. There's one every 18 inches or so all the way around the entire property. These hoses here are to pump out water that, that keeps filling onto the pool deck. And we haven't really gotten a clear answer uh, if it's leaking from underneath or if it was from the rain. Now, here's another one here. I mean, look at this mess. And you can see stuff here that just looks like it's almost on top of each other. It's hard to tell. But again, more corrosion. This right here is the back side of the vestibule down on the garage floor. The little lobby where the elevators are, where you get out of the elevators and go to your car. And this is that blue hotel across the street on the north side of Northwest 88th Street. The pool is sort of over here where that tourist shot that now famous video looking down the ramp at the debris piled up on the floor. These two excavators are sitting on top of Collins Avenue, and this is what's left of the building that, that they demolished on 4th of July evening. Okay, now here's interesting. So we're looking, we're sort of standing in the middle of the garage, and we're looking northwest. This is the light at Collins Avenue. The Blue Hotel is over here. And the ramp to the garage is sort of off to the right. This is one of the posts next to it that got totally uh, bent and twisted and compressed. So you can see how all of the concrete has shattered. Now this one looks a little better here in terms of the spacing. I can't tell what they've done all the way through. And I can't tell if there's too much rebar in there, which would be crowding everything. You can sort of look at the other column next to it to see. Okay, let's see what else they've got. You can't really tell where on the site this is. Now this one, I wish they would show us more of these columns or indicate like exactly where it is. But I'm really concerned about all of this corrosion at the bottom and it really got cracked. That, that probably just happened from the, the punch shearing because it looks like everything just came all the way down to the bottom there. But you know, it sort of held its own at the bottom. It, it sort of stuck there. It didn't get sheared completely off. And I'm not sure if there's any point there where whole huge amounts of water would be coming in. I don't know if this is coming in from rains or where at this point. But I would really love to know which column number this is. Okay, now this right here... I can tell where we're at because they're at column number 19 right here. They're looking due east towards the beach. So these excavators are on the ocean side of the, the edge of the property. I don't know where these guys are at. They're just examining some of the pieces of rubble. This is facing south because that's the wall for the 87 park condo next door and now this view here is from the northeast corner of the property and we're looking towards the ocean diagonally southeast in this direction so right behind this i can see a little bit part of the pool the pool is obstructed by the vestibule and that's that temporary ramp that nest built right next to the pool Probably because that's where most of the strength lies right now. Now this here, again, we're looking towards... We're probably standing right around where the pool is. And we're looking towards the northeast. So the ocean is over here. Okay. And this spot in the corner right here 
is where the other lady, the resident lady, three years ago took video of the pool of water that was sitting around her car. And it was leaking down the wall. If you remember that, I showed you part of that on my garage walkthrough of Fiorella Terenzi's video. And But anyway, so that other video from three years ago was shot right over here. Okay, so yeah, her space is right here, is number seven. This is the bottom of the ramp. This is that post number 14, right here. Parking space is 14 right here. This is that post number 27, the real famous one now where we think this is the southernmost border of the building. So the building, this column right here for 27, which should be L9.1. Some people call it L10. This is the one that compressed down one of those four or five columns that failed. This would have been one of the other ones here. And possibly this one here. And this, I think, is what is left of that 27 slash 28 pole that we now call M11. So they sort of gave us a little bit of a decent view of it there. Now here's an interesting shot. Because in this shot, it gives us a heck of a lot more information than, than you would think. So let me just show you what's on here. And then I'm going to overlay my graphic that I made for this. This is really cool. So this shows that the pool and the hot tub were both pretty much unaffected by the collapse. There's no cracks that we know of. That they're not leaking as far as we know. And in fact, the very first picture that I saw the morning of the collapse was the bird's eye view of this pool showing perfectly blue water. Nothing even landed in the pool. The pool was still holding all of its water. It was looking fine. So we know that the pool did not have anything to do with the failure of this building, even though lots of um, trolls keep coming in and keep trying to say that I'm saying that the pool had anything to do with it, but I, it did not. So this is a great overview here. So this right here, I believe, is the beam that goes over space 15, and I think it just fell down. It's an L-shaped beam. But let me go ahead and overlay the picture. I want to show you what we did. Uh, just a quick recap. As you remember, the building that collapsed was here. And it was these five columns that collapsed, right? And so what I want to show you here is this is what I did. I made this overlay on top of the picture here to give us a better view of what was going on. So here's the ramp. And the reason why I put this little picture right here was because this is the picture that the tourist had shot, that video, if you remember. So if we go and look at it, if you recall, here's your column number 14. Here's column 27. And the 27 slash 28 has been taken out at this point by the falling debris. So we know the debris field is sort of behind 27. And it looks like some of it might even be near it or in front of it, but most of it is behind it. So that's why we're showing it right here as ground zero being in this area. All of these little stars here, these represent the rubble pile that we were seeing in the tourist video. So now we have a better idea of where we're at and where everything occurred here. And so here is, I, I marked all the parking spaces here for you. I numbered them all. And even in 78, I put that puddle. That's where the pool contractor that came in to look at the pool 36 hours before the failure said he saw a big pool of water in space number 78. Okay, and so coming back here to these columns, I circled the five columns here. See this yellow band? This represents the building footprint, approximately. So we know that the southernmost border of the building was right here where these four columns are. And so these were the ones that buckled and failed and caused the building to collapse. So what happened here is these, everything to the left side of this line is underneath the building. Everything to the right side of this line is outside the building. So this is still inside the garage, but all of this is underneath the pool deck. All of this right in here, pool deck, pool deck, everything you see here. So these two right here are, are smaller columns. These are all 16 by 16. Everything in here is 16 by 16. Everything outside the building is 12 inches by 16 inches. So that's why I said that these were weaker, such that when the pool deck came collapsing down with that punching shear, 
that it likely just collapsed this particular column right here, which is M11. And since it was tied to 27 here, or M10 or M9.1, depending on how you want to call that, but it was tied with a beam here and likely pulled it and torsioned it and caused everything else to collapse at the same time. Okay, and now this is the temporary ramp that NIST built to get in and out of the area here. And remember, this is the post that has the number 14 stamped on it at the bottom of the ramp. And we could clearly see that from Fiorella's video of the garage. Here's the screenshot of it here. Okay, so this obviously did come crashing down from up top. And here's a bird's eye view of it. And forget this column number, I had it wrong. I was always using this bottom line as a placeholder for everything related to here, just so I wouldn't forget. But this really should be M11 here. But at least I got the 2728. Uh, correct on here and there's your post for 27 so this whole thing just came basically crashing down from the ceiling so let me see so this column right here the one that i think may have been the cause of all of it the one that got the whole dominoes to start falling this column is really this one right here. it's right smack dab in the middle of this planter and, of course, you know, the other guy from the, uh, that other channel was making fun of me because I, I, I showed this on the deck, like, you know, tr trying to represent heavy equipment that might have been brought in to install these palm trees and maybe even to remove them. Or maybe they even brought in forklifts to bring in all of these pavers when they installed the pavers in 1996. Maybe that added more stress. We don't know. But let me show you something. And I've showed this many times to you folks already since early July. And that is when you look at this bird's eye view of the pool deck, you can see the exposed area right here. Here's where that column is, that 27 slash 28, which is M11. He's right in the middle of this planter. This was the planter that was added in 1996 so the original architect's plan only had this on it so even josh over at building integrity had mentioned it on his video uh, about a week or two ago that he couldn't understand he was looking at the floor plans from the architect and he goes i don't know what these are they're not on the floor plan and i told him later on that uh, they came back in 1996 and i showed him the plans i gave him the name of the drawing that shows these plans where they added these planters and even the palm trees are showed in one of the drawings. But this was the space where they explored into that concrete deck on the pool deck last year, the contractor. And here it is later on still exposed and they never filled it back in. So this is what has me the most alarmed as to why this happened. It is no surprise that this hole here was dug right next to the column which is right here. I mean, you can't ignore the fact that something's wrong here. And this was the one, I don't know if we still have any of those other pool pictures where I showed the, the Bob's barricade. Yeah, there it is. See that? So even months after they had dug those holes, there was, I made my arrow here showing, Hey, why is that Bob's barricade there right next to that planter? And there's our, pooling of water that we keep seeing on all of these MLS photos along the pool. Now, this is a view from probably the easternmost portion right next to the pool, and we're looking diagonal again, northwest. Here's Collins Avenue. Here's the Blue Hotel next door. The pool is right here where the tourists heard the noises and came over here and shot right down the ramp. Here's your ramp. Here's your column number 14. Space number 14 is right here. Here's your other column, number 27, right here. And again, a myth that they keep avoiding showing me a close-up right over here, the one that we really need to see what was happening over there at that column 27 slash 28. So, so this obviously fell off the ceiling because right here is the main drive in this area. And you can see that it landed on other debris, so it's sort of sitting at an angle. So this did indeed come crashing down. It's a huge, deep beam, if that's what it is. It's an L shape. So let's take a look at the framing diagram real quick. 
Okay, so now coming back to the video, I'm going to see if there's anything else that really jumps out at me. Nothing really there. Okay, so as we look at the lobby framing plan here on page 31 out of 336 of the original 1979 floor plan, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to zoom us in a little. And remember where we're at, folks, because here's L&M. So the ramp is right here. You can see that sort of a C shape right there. You see that? There's your beams. It says beam 33, 34, and 35. And they connect on both ends with these columns. And I'm going to show it to you right now on uh, the screenshot from Fiorello's garage video. But just remember where this is, okay? And remember where our column 27 is right here, which is M9.1 or M10, depending on how you want to look at it. The difference is only inches. See how you have 9.1 here and 10? And goes right through here through this. Is, these are the southern border of the building. So these are those, these right here are those columns that collapse. So you can see its relationship to it. It's basically one over. Here's 27 right here for parking space. 27 is right here. And those beams go right here like this. So here we are looking at Fiorella's video of the garage. And I did a freeze frame here, a screen grab. And here you can see that big C shape. It starts over here on 28, goes all the way over there, comes over to here like this, right? And then it comes back over to here. So you can see how tall and thick that thing is. That's what came crashing straight down onto the floor. Now, what happened to these columns under it? Did they just crumble and crush out of the way? From the weight of everything? Well, we don't know. But that's that piece that we were looking at. And also, when you look here, you know, people always ask me, well, you know, why were these columns so thin? You know, yeah, we don't know. These are 16 by 16. And if you compare these columns now, I don't know. Let me see. And I want you to look at the video that I uploaded a week and a half ago. I don't know if you folks saw it or not, but I did that video of a tour of the Marriott Harbor Beach Resort in Fort Lauderdale when I stayed there for a couple of days uh, a few weeks ago with my family. And I pointed out all of the leaks in the garage there. I showed you some really bad areas of damage and crumbling concrete on the that was landing on the garage floor there and lots of spalling and rusting rebar so you definitely want to check out that but the one thing that that harbor beach marriott has going for it that they don't have going for them here at the champlain towers you see how these skinny columns just go straight up into the ceiling well you can see here that now, a parking garage at the so Fort Lauderdale Marriott here, Harbor Beach, the and as you can see, they have they really have big have nice columns here. Panels. But then you can All see they've also got to the pads right above them, like this. Here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and correct some of the nomenclature we originally had on some of these columns in our in my drawings, and I'll tell you why. There was some people were coming in saying, "Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. If he can't get these labels wrong, how is he going to know what's going on?" It doesn't matter. I mean, I had everything circled. I knew which columns here that we were talking about. I knew what they are. Certainly, everybody else does too. But a lot of people are wrong in the way they were labeling this row here. So let me show you what I did and why I did. Okay, so here's what happened originally and why I, I just kind of balked and got confused and didn't know how to label stuff. Because if you look at the architect's page 9 out of 336 here of his original floor plan, he's got everything listed here, right? So you can see L is here, K, J, I, H. So you can already see where this is going. The, the, he didn't maintain a standard across all of his drawings. And then he didn't have the rows on there, right? So let's see if he has any... So. Finally, he put some rows on here, but they don't jive. Look at this. He's got one, 18 here, 17, 16, 15. And then this would have been 13. So these are the, the columns that collapsed. They should have been 13. If he had just maintained a, a consistency here, like he did on, like on page 10. But then the whole rest of the drawings, he starts changing them. So let me bring you down over to here. Uh, he still has them the same way here, all the way into page 21. But then, 
here's the framing drawings now. All of a sudden, he switches to a new tactic here. Now he's saying the bottom row here, the, these are the columns that collapsed. Now he's saying it's 10. And now he has the L and M over here now. So this is sort of the one that a lot of people went with. Okay, but let me show you some more action here, folks. All of a sudden, on another framing drawing here, those same columns, now they're no longer 9. He slips in a 9.1. But the 9.1, see, you can tell here, they're only inches off. I'm going to zoom in on this, and I'll show you why this matters and why everybody has different nomenclature, you see. That's why I think the people that are calling this row M10, you know, M10 here for the column, I think it's wrong. Because if you look, 9.1 actually goes right through the center of these columns. I don't know why he has this 10 over here, except that if we come over here, there's probably something further on over here. Now he's got a 10.1 on that side. So this guy's all over the map, literally with the way he, he calls it. So you could either call this guy M9.1 or M10. So that's why when I went back to do this overlay here, I really had a hard time deciding, should I call it M9.1 or should I call it M10? So I'm gonna leave it as both. That way, if there's any confusion, people will know exactly what I'm talking about. Because if you put it as M10, the people in the other camp are gonna go, hey, that's an M9.1, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to leave it like this. And I leave, I'm leaving the nomenclature of the 27 on there because this column has a 27 printed on it down in the garage when the building was still standing for space number 27. And I've always called this one sort of our 27 slash 28. And then this one's definitely row 11. It's outside the building. So there's no ambiguity there. So oh, let me go back to the drawing. See, uh, and even then, they called it 11.1. So what do you what do you want to call this thing? It's, it's just ridiculous. Do we call it 11.1, you know? So this guy was very inconsistent, and he doesn't strike me as a very uh, neat architect. And in fact, he was suspended from the board for um, a design that failed under a hurricane in the 1960s, and he tried to appeal it and lost. So he was suspended... Um, for several months so this to me is just not surprising i i don't like the way he he was inconsistent among the different uh, floor plans here about that so i hope you found this video insightful and it certainly answered a number of questions for us as to what was going on at the beginning so anyway if you like this hey give us a thumbs up down below and then make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of our other great videos right and be sure to check out this playlist over here that has more of the videos related to this condo collapse and then try this other playlist over here that has a lot of our great remodeling videos for you well thank you so much for tuning in tonight folks and we'll see you on the next one